All right, we're back in Unity. Our second tutorial is going to be when we walk into this. Actually, when we press E, we want something to happen. And in this case, we want another canvas to show up. Another one. This one's going to contain a puzzle. All right, so this is what is happening so far. So I'm going to exit out of that. Let's exit out of play mode. And I'm going to right click, create a new UI canvas. And this one is going to be my puzzle canvas. So I will call it that puzzle underscore canvas. My puzzle canvas is going to have two things. It's going to have some UI text. This is going to be the um, clue underscore text. If I double click on that and just zoom out, I'll do a very quick amount of styling. Just make it a bit bigger. Float it in the middle and increase the font size to what was it before? 80, 70, I believe. All right, and the text is just going to be um, the color of fire. No, what's a cool color? We'll do the color of grass, and the the answer is going to be green later on. So we'll just lift that up and we'll set this to white. Now that's just some text, we're also going to need some user input. So we'll right click on our puzzle canvas, under UI we'll get an input field. And this is going to be the user input underscore input field. Um, user answer underscore input field. So user answer has two things, placeholder text, and I will give that a quick name user answer underscore placeholder text and normal text and this will be our user answer underscore text so this is going to be the actual user answer now we'll do some once again quick styling width will make it uh, 400 height will make it 200 we know that the answer is going to be green so I'll make the text quite large in this thing. So placeholder text, I'll make the font, let's say 150, no, uh, yeah. Let's just go 100. 100 and I'll float it right in the middle of my thing. Answer dot 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 is gonna be the placeholder text. And the user answer, I'll just quickly style it as 100, floating it in the middle. It's got no value as of yet. Cool. Now, just like before, I will quickly play it just to show how this works. So just how it works, as a normal canvas, it is plastered on my screen, um, and I cannot interact with it just yet, because I keep pressing escape to exit game mode. Um, I need access to my cursor to actually click in there. Press E to interact, still works, but as we see, that's a separate canvas. All right, so. All right, what we're going to do is I'm going to hide the puzzle canvas. E prompt currently is just showing that E prompt. We'll make it in a new script just because we want E prompt to be able to be used on any trigger area that we would need it to be. And it's just going to show it whenever we show up. So we'll make a new script. Show, not show prompt this time, this is going to show puzzle. Open that one up. It's also going to hide and show that E prompt when we need it to. So we're going to say once again get access to you need the UI features using Unity Engine UI, and we are then going to go public canvas. Firstly, I'm going to um, reference that e prompt canvas for later on and our public canvas puzzle canvas okay now I'll get rid of these for now these here are currently our um, and I'll write a small comment 
canvases. We're also going to get access to our text value, and this is going to be a public text, and this is going to be the text of the user input. So we'll write user input text. We're also going to make a public string, so this is a text value, a string variable, and this is going to be our um, secret code. We can set that right now if we want, and we know that our code is going to be green because it asks what is the color of grass. So we can set that up. Now, this is once again a script on our trigger area, so we can use trigger values for in our code. And we're going to write a third one this time void on trigger stay. It's going to once again need a collider, but this collider is going to be the thing inside the trigger. If, so it's going to constantly be checking the thing inside the trigger has the tag that is equal to player, just like before, we are going to do two things. Check if they press E is going to be the first one. This is quite simple. If <clears throat> sorry, inputs. Just input. If input dot get key has the key code for e, so i.e. if we press the e key, um, we are going to show puzzle canvas and hide e. Prompt. And we already know how to do both of these because we've done them before. We're going to reference the canvases E. Oh, sorry, we'll do the puzzle one. Puzzle canvas dot enabled equals true, so that will show it. And to hide the E prompt, we're going to go E prompts canvas dot enabled equals false, i.e., hiding it. All right, so pretty straightforward now on, but this should function as expected. We're going to need to set up a couple things back in Unity, so we'll do that right now. Back in Unity, the bench trigger now has oh, an error. The name green doesn't exist in the current context. Oh, small error. Around the string, we just need to put some quotation marks. Save that, and we'll jump back to Unity. All right, so it's asking us for a few things. Firstly, the E prompt canvas is going to be, if we click on the dot this time, the E prompt canvas, the puzzle canvas is going to be puzzle canvas, and the user input text is going to come from um, the user answer text value. Okay, so let's just quickly click on play and we'll see how we're going so far. Oh, where are we? There's the bench, we'll walk up to it, E's popped up, we'll push E, and it has successfully shown the color of grass is an answer. I can just walk away, which is a bit of an issue, and if I walk back into it, I notice that press E to interact is back up. What I want to do is I want to freeze my player here, but I also want to give them ways of closing this window if I need to. So we'll go over that very quickly. So we'll quickly click on play to stop playing it. Now this puzzle canvas I will enable so I can see it. I'm going to add one more thing to it. Oh, right click on puzzle canvas under UI. We are going to add a button. This button will make it uh, 50 by, oh, no, no, 50 by 50. And the text on the button, if we click on that, the text on the button is going to just be a nice X that will make a bit bigger. Here. There we 
go. We'll rename them. This is going to be firstly we'll rename the button the exit button. Exit underscore button. And the text is going to be exit underscore button underscore text. And I'm just going to position my button up in the top corner over here. Alright. So very soon I'm going to need to give this button um, some functionality. We're going to use the show puzzle puzzle script, but we're going to make a special um, void just for using the button because this does a lot of the things that we need it to do, but we also just really quickly need to add the ability to exit um, out of here. So we're going to make a new public void. This one's going to be escape button or oh, exit button we'll call it it doesn't need any parameters <coughs> in this one and this is going to do a couple things so exit button is going to firstly get our puzzle canvas dot enabled and set that value to false it's going to get our e prompt canvas dot enabled and set that value to true because it will assume that we're still standing in the e prompt and later on it's going to um, give us access to move again once we stop the ability to move up here now this is all cool and well but for more experienced players we're also going to set up if we get some form of input. Do not try to suggest that to me. Dot get key. And this time we're going to use the key code. Uh, key code for escape. So key code dot escape. So if they press the escape key, what we want to do is we want to go down and we want to do the same stuff for the exit button. So go and do that method for us, thanks. Alright, so let's go back to our game. Cool lads, we're back in the game. I'm going to just hide this canvas because we don't need to see it. And just make sure that my exit uh, button, the little X, and both the escape key work as expected. So what we should see is, oh there it is, when I walk into here, it says press E to enter it, I will press E. And the escape key will bring me back to that screen. So will only work inside of the trigger area, as that's when we're checking it. So if we move out and then try to press escape, it's not going to work. So we're going to need to fix that um, now to stop us being able to move. All right. So on our player, how he's currently moving, if we zoom in on him, is he's using a character controller. And this controls all his movement. So let's go back to our script. We're going to have to reference the character controller. So we're going to public <coughs> character controller player oh, controller. That's a reference to that. And when our puzzle comes up, we want to stop the player moving and we do that by just saying hey player controller we do not want you to be enabled and likewise whenever we exit out of this we want to be enabled um, so we'll write player controller dot enabled equals true We want to, when we press E, give the player access to the cursor. We write that just by writing cursor. <clears throat> so we do this in um, the look around script. Lock state is going to equal cursor lock mode dot. Um, none. So we don't want any lock mode attached to our cursor, but when we exit 
the game we want to lock. So you are, yes, so are. Lock the cursor again, and just the opposite curse. So, um, dot lock state is going to equal cursor <coughs> lock mode dot locked. All right, so we're going to enable or allow us to use the cursor when we press E and the puzzle shows up and disable or not allow us to use the cursor um, when we escape or exit. So back to Unity. All right, so we're back in Unity and we are ready to go. We'll just click on the bench trigger and we'll get playing. All right, so we're back in Unity and now we just need to tell our little person, oh, we'll turn the canvas on. This little button up here that when it's clicked it needs to exit the game so we'll click on the button and all the way down here it says on click now our button we're going to give access to the show puzzle um script because it's going to need to know how to show and hide itself so the puzzle canvas is the puzzle canvas the e prompt canvas is the e prompt canvas this is why it's so important to name things correctly the user input text is the user answer underscore text Secret code is green player controller comes from the player but on click what we want to happen is we want this script to run the function uh, exit button all right so we'll go again and hide this canvas and now let's try to click the button and see if it works as expected awesome Awesome, so we're in game. Now let's go and see if this works. We'll press E to interact, type in whatever we want. I cannot move as you see by pressing the movement keys, but I push the X and it allows me to move again. E, escape. Escape key's not working just because in playback mode it's also trying to uh, exit out of that. In playback mode it's also trying to exit so that I can click the play button like I've been doing um, up there.